All right, so weak acid and base equilibrium. So we've talked about equilibrium back in um, back in unit seven, and now we're going to apply that to acids and bases. So remember these equations. This, um, if you have your Ka, this is your equation because remember we've got our whatever acid we have here, our weak acid plus water is going to yield, that's a front and back yield sign, the H3O, why is this erasing now? H3O plus, plus A minus, okay? So this is your weak acid. This would have been considered a base then. This would have considered your conjugate acid, and this would be your conjugate base. Everybody cool with that? That's how they got this equation. And with this equation, we eliminate the water out of it because it is a pure liquid. All right. So we can also have KB here, where if you have KB, or not KB, I'm sorry. Shoot. This won't let me erase. It's being naughty. So if you have your base over here, whatever that is, you put that in water. Water is going to act like an acid in this case. That means if this is an acid on the other side, it's going to have dropped what? If it's an acid over here and it's a base over here, what's going to have lost? Hydrogen. So it's going to become hydroxide. And you're going to end up with your base having an extra hydrogen on it. So base with a hydrogen. They have an HB plus. I guess I should do it the right. Okay. And then this is what that equation would look like for your KB value. Okay. You have your K, you have a PKA then that you can use. And that's going to become important as we move through. There's several things that we do with that. So you need to be comfortable with what that concept is. It's just the negative log of KA. Just like pH equals the negative log of your H plus concentration. Okay. If you want a P of something, you just take the negative log of it. Does that make sense? Everybody have their brain kind of wrapped around that mathematical concept? All right. So we're going to be working with that, and you need to be comfortable going back and forth between these two things. Good. All right. So we know that there are six strong acids. Some people also have a seventh. So just be aware that that is also oftentimes considered a strong acid. If it's not in this list, it's a weak acid. So if it's an acid and it's not in that list, it's weak. All right. Again, this is that equation. I just had it up here. Notice that this arrow goes back and forth. That means that this acid, whatever it is, is going to be a weak acid. If this was a strong acid, that arrow would be pointing one direction. That also means that the Ka value for this is going to be less than one. And your reactants are going to be favored then. So if your Ka value is less than 1, this is favored. Your reactant side is favored, meaning that more of this is going to stay together than it is going to break apart. Does that make sense? All right. So equilibrium constants then can be associated. Oh, whoa, went too far. Can be associated with this. Again, we use our Ka. Did I go too far? What's wrong? 
Okay, all right. Um, that's called your acid ionization constant. They are usually very small, again, less than one. And oftentimes pKa is reported instead of Ka because it's just easier. You don't have to do the scientific notation for it, okay? So for acids, the smaller the Ka, the weaker the acid. Weak acid will exist primarily in its unionized, so in this form. So most of it is going to stay together. So if you're looking at a particle diagram, most of it stays together. Very little of it is going to fall apart into its components, okay? So very little of it is going to make, this is H plus here. <clears throat> This is <clears throat> A minus. <clears throat> and you can see in this example that very little of that has come apart to produce these things <clears throat> because it's weak. Good. Now, a weak acid does not mean that it's not concentrated. A weak acid can still do a lot of damage, especially if it's concentrated. Okay, so don't confuse weak or, and dilute and concentrated and strong. They're not the same things. Okay, you have strong acid in your body right now. Where is it? In your tum tum. Yes, that is what is. The start, you know, it doesn't start. I guess your amylase and your spit starts your digestion as far as chemical digestion. But the acid does a lot of uh, the digestion of certain things like proteins and stuff like that once it gets into your tummy. Now, how is your tummy protected? What protects your tummy from that acid eating it away? Have you ever thrown up to the point where you're just throwing up slime? That's what's protecting your tummy from the acid, okay? And that mucus lining lines your stomach and protects it from that acid eating away. If you are under stress, if you drink too much caffeine, if you, you know, there's other things, certain medications, like my arthritis medication makes me more prone to having that layer kind of eaten away. Okay, it makes you more susceptible to things called ulcers, okay, where that acid will actually start digesting your stomach and it'll cause sores in there. Eventually those can bleed and then, you know, you've got all kinds of problems from that. It's very, very painful. So, um, you know, you want to try to protect your mucus lining as much as possible. <clears throat> when they tell you with your medications, a lot of times they'll tell you to take it with food. They're trying to protect that mucus lining from that medication. So they want you to have food in your stomach so that it's not just that medication in there. So it's important that you actually listen to them when they tell you that. All right. Um, most HA will remain intact. Only a few ionize. The weaker the acid, the fewer of these will dissolve or ionize. All right, weak bases, same idea holds true <clears throat> with a weak base. Very few of, of them are going to end up forming the OH ions here. Um, so very few of them are going to break apart that water because remember you've got water over here, okay? That water then is going to give off one of these hydrogens to a base, and that's what this thing is going to end up looking like then. And very few of those have, have that happen, okay? Um, so percent ionization. This is an often one that you will end up seeing on um, tests, quizzes, your exam in May. It's a measurement of how much it ionizes as an acid. You could also have percent ionization for bases. So a strong acid will have 100% ionization. That's why it has a one-way arrow. 
Weak acids then will have a much lower percentage. So what you do is you take the H plus concentration at equilibrium and you take your weak acid concentration when it was originally put in that water. So that is the problem here. A lot of people want to take those two things from the same spot and you cannot do it. Okay. The top one is at equilibrium. The bottom one is your initial value. So be very, very careful. You can imagine Elmer Fudd trying to sneak up on the bug's money. Be very, very careful. And then, of course, you multiply by 100 to get your percent. Okay. <clears throat> so you ready, you ready, you ready? We have a pKa of 7.54. They want to know what the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of hypochlorite is. No, hypos, chlorous, hypochlorous acid. There we go, hypochlorous acid. Now I got my naming conventions down properly. All right, you got your calculators out? All right, first thing we are going to do is we are going to take this and we are going to get it to a Ka value. So I'm going to go 10 to the negative 7.54, and that is going to equal my Ka value. And when I punch that into my calculator, I get 2.9 times 10 to the negative 8. <clears throat> As a general rule, just to kind of check your math and make sure that things look in the ballpark. When you have a value here that's like 7.54, this value should be around 7 or 8. Okay. If you're calculating this and this value here is around like negative 3, go back and recheck your calculations. Okay. Because you punched something in wrong. Guarantee it. Okay. So just kind of keep Keep that in mind. And the same holds true when you're punching this in to try to get back to this value. You know, these should be in the same ballpark. All right. So we are going to set up our equation. We have HClO. We are going to add that to some water. This is an acid, which means what's going to come off of it? The hydrogen. The hydrogen is going to go with this guy. We're going to form H3O plus or H plus, however you want to write it. And that will leave HClO minus as my conjugate base on this side. All right. Ice, ice, baby. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I won't have started out with, this guy goes away, remember, okay? This guy is going to start out at 0.1. This guy is going to start out at 0 and 0. I am going to subtract from here. And I'm going to add here and here. I can do the math to verify, but I know I can just see that this is so much smaller than what this is, that I am going to ignore that X, but I have to document that. I have to make sure that they realize that I have made that connection between this X getting ignored and that Ka value. Okay. So, now I'm going to do my 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8 equals 
I'm going to do my x times x on the top, which is x squared, over, and I'm just going to write down similarity here. Okay. I then multiply 0.1 times my Ka, and then what do I do to get x? Take the square root. Very good. Okay. When I do that, I end up with 5.4 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, what are my units on this? What did I end up calculating here? Right, H plus. So this is molarity of H plus. It's also the molarity of this guy as well because these are in a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so just as a side note, you have also calculated the value of this, which might come in handy later on when we get into more stuff. Okay, I just want to kind of bring that up and keep that in the back of your mind. All right, have we answered the question at this point? What have they asked? pH. So I need to take this value and I need to do one more thing with it. What do I need to do? Take the negative log. So if I take the negative log of this, my pH then is going to equal 4.27. Good? You good? Make a sense? Okay. I just want to make sure everybody's got it in their mind and everything's kind of solidified before we move to the next problem. Any questions about where I got any numbers, what I did algebraically, anything? Yes, ma'am. Well, I mean, if you, let's just take this into our calculator then. If you do 0.1 minus 5.4, Four times 10 to the minus 5, what is your answer in your calculator? Exactly. And if you take it into account for sig figs, because it should be to the ten thousandths place or the thousandths place, it's not even going to show up in that value. So that's why it's okay for you to be able to ignore this because it's it's so it, it's not going to make a difference. It's like I said, if I get on a scale and I pull a hair out, the scale's not going to register it. Well, you can. Yeah, you can do this and not ignore it, but you're going to end up having to use a quadratic equation, which is painful. So, I, you know, if you want to use a quadratic equation, is is it, you can, but you're just wait. First of all, you're wasting time, which you don't have in AP. And second, you have more chance of error. Okay. But the time is the biggest factor. And do you have the quadratic equation on your calculator solver? Well, good. At least you got that. So that's like the five, I told you like a 5% rule. So if you take the 5.4 times 10 to the minus 5 and you divide it by the 0.1, which is the initial value here, okay, this is your Ka you're going to end up with times 100. You're going to end up with 0.054%. That is less than 5%. So then ignore it. If it's equal to or greater than 5%, then you wouldn't ignore it. Nope, you don't calculate X. You. Oh, wait a minute. You're right. Um, I used the wrong value there. Oh, that was just the check. Okay. Um, oh, it's hard to switch back and forth between Word and this. Word is so much more friendly for doing this. Okay. <clears throat> 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8. Ah, I can't do that. Erase, 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 erase. Okay. 
So see what that ends up being as far as division. It's a stupid small, stupid large number, I'm guessing. Yep. It ends up being 2.9 times 10 to the what? Negative 7. Okay. So if that is less than... I th can you do uh, 1 over x or the re reciprocal of that? Can you hit the reciprocal on your calculator? Do you know how to do reciprocals? No. Give it to Macy. You know how to do reciprocals? Yeah. Do a reciprocal of that value for me. X to the negative 1. It's along the side right by the it's, log. Um, 34, okay, 34,000 what? 482.7. Okay, good enough. Hey, it, I, I had this set up backwards. I should have had this on the top and that on the bottom. If this is on the top and that's on the bottom, this is your answer. If that's greater than 100, you can ignore it. Sometimes it's just easier to do a reciprocal than it is to type everything back in. Okay, good. But like I said, if we do this at the end, you can see that it's not going to make a difference. So just ignore that X. The other thing is, is that they are never going to give you a situation on an AP exam where you have to use the quadratic formula to solve. Okay. They have guaranteed us that. All right. So we want to do percent calculate, uh, percent ionization for this guy. This is our initial amount. Okay. So that value is going to be on the bottom of our equation when we get done. Okay. We have a Ka value here for acetic acid. So I will tell you when I'm working with these things where these acids are longer formulas, this is how I document that. I document this as an A as an anion. Instead of writing all of that out, that takes time. Remember, you are looking for any way to cut time. Okay, so if you can remember that this equals, that this A here equals that, then you've saved yourself a lot of time. You saw how much longer that took to write out, right? Okay, so I write this out. This is a weak acid. I have a two-way arrow. That's going to give me H plus plus A minus. And that saves time because now I didn't have to write this down again. Okay. Your people, the people that are grading these will know what you're doing if you do this. So you don't have to, you don't even have to do this part to explain that to them. You just have to have this in your mind that that equals that. Does that make sense? Because that's a long thing to write out twice because you got to write it out here. And you got to write it out here. All right. So I am starting out initially with 0.155 of this. I am going to have minus X here in the end. I'm just going right to the equilibrium table because you can probably do that in your brain at this point. Yes. Without having to do the whole ice table for this one. Okay, again, a time savings for you if you're comfortable doing that, which I'm hoping after unit seven, you're good with that. Okay, all right. So I am going to verify that I can ignore this. So I'm going to take 0.155 over 1.76 times 10 to the minus five. I'm going to do that in my calculator. 
and we're going to see what that value is. If I can figure out how to get my calculator to work again. Okay, there we go. All right, so 0.155 divided by 1.765. All right, so I get this value is 8807. I'm doing my my rule to see if I can ignore this X. Oh, okay. She wanted me to show how I was able to ignore this X for the last problem. So I'm trying to show her how I would verify that. So if I take the initial value here and I divide it by the Ka, if this value is greater than 100, which this obviously is, I can ignore that X, okay? So that's my ignore verification. I was kind of doing this in my brain before because I could kind of see that, that, that this is going to result in a big number. But some people had kind of forgotten how to get that ignoring thing going. All right. So I'm going to ignore that now. I'm going to take that Ka value then the 1.76 times 10 to the minus five. I'm gonna do X squared over 0.155. Multiply my Ka by the 0.155 and then take the square root. And that's molar H plus. Now, if they wanted me to calculate the pH, what would I do? Negative log of this, okay? If they wanted to know the value of this A minus, it would also be equal to this value. That's not what they wanted though. They wanted percent ionization. So percent ionization, I'm going to take this H plus value that I have at equilibrium. I'm going to divide it by my initial amount. So that is from the problem up here. That is my initial amount, not the minus X. And I'm going to multiply by 100. And I end up with 1.07 percent. That means for every 100 of these, I have one of them that comes apart like this. That's why it's weak. Because most of it stays together as acetic acid. This, by the way, is vinegar. So if you have vinegar in your cabinet, that's what vinegar is. Good. Everybody clear on that? Now, <clears throat> let's go on to some fun stuff. So this is homework tonight. I also want to take you over to the other sheet that you're going to see in your packet for this. And this is, what this is, is when you have these salts. Okay, well, let me see here. Hold on. Maybe you have other stuff in here. Yeah, there's some Okay, I need to get that uh, acid-based properties of hydrolysis. Okay, so you do have those in there. My bad. Where did those go? Someday I'll get my act together, y'all. Sorry. Where did that stuff go?
Does it start out on there with it saying the pH exercise 16? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, get myself here. So exercise 16 says that they want us to figure out the pH of methylamine. And it is a 0.1 molar solution of this methylamine. So we're just going to call it methylamine, okay? And this is a base, so it has a negative value here, okay? So we're going to take that methylamine. I don't know what the formula for methylamine is, so we're just making something up, y'all, okay? And it works. It's okay. <clears throat> we're going to add that guy to water. If he goes into water and he's a base, what is going to happen to this water? This is a base. This is an acid. What's going to happen on the other side? Right. This is going to lose a hydrogen. It's going to donate a hydrogen because remember acids are hydrogen donors. It's going to donate a hydrogen. What's left behind then from that water? What's left behind? OH minus. Okay. And this hydrogen then will have gone with this guy. Hydrogen has a positive charge of one, this has a negative charge of one. So this is gonna make that's supposed to be an M. So methylamine with a hydrogen on it. I don't know what it's called, doesn't really matter. You just have to realize that it's produced this guy, right? Okay, and you recognize him, right? Hydroxide? Okay, all right. They gave us here a KB value. Our KB value here is 4.38 times 10 to the minus four. <clears throat> all right, KB is gonna work in a similar way that we've been working with the KAs. So KB is gonna equal you're going to have the amount of these things, which of course we are going to state as X and X. You go back and talk to those two guys back there. Okay, so we've got, we've got our KB value that we're going to get. We've got our X's here. This guy started out as 1.0. We're going to minus an X when we are at equilibrium. Okay. Am I going to be able to ignore this X? Well, if we take our KB, we do 1 divided by 4.38 times 10 to the minus 4. Is that going to be greater than 100? I'm hoping that something like this is starting to get in your brain that you can see that these are, you know, it, it's, it's getting significant enough that you're going to be able to ignore. Just make sure you document that, that X. All right. So we've got our X squared on top. We've got one on the bottom. We've got our KB value that we can bring down here.
And that is going to give us then x is going to equal uh, 0 0.0209 molar what? Huh? Do I have an H plus anywhere up here? OH, OH minus, yes. Okay. So that is my OH molarity. They wanted a pH. So I can take the negative log of this value, and that is going to equal what? Negative log of OH gives me POH. Okay. And then if I take 14 minus the POH, I have the pH, which you should end up with 12.32 then. <clears throat> Does that make sense since this is a weak base that it would have a pH greater than 7? Yeah, because bases are pH greater than 7. Now, we need to talk about this concept of acids and bases in this hydrolysis. When you are dealing with different ionic compounds, they will break apart and either do this or create hydrogen ions sometimes, okay? So if we are talking about something called a neutral salt, the neutral salt will have a cation component that came that would produce a strong base and it would have a anion component that would have produced a strong acid. So for example, if I put this with hydroxide, this is going to form NaOH. That is one of your strong bases. If I have this guy and I put it with hydrogen, it's going to produce a strong acid, okay? So you have to look and see what these would do if you put them in with water. Okay, this would just be, this is a strong and a strong. So if both of these are from strongs, it's going to result in a neutral acid. Now, let's look at a situation where we have a basic salt. So they're talking about basic salts next on your things. So a basic salt is going to have a component where you have, um, what are they using here? Do they give you anything? Okay, they gave you potassium. Okay, I just wanted to try to stick with the same thing that they gave you. Okay. So this, if I put that in water, KOH, if the water split, the K would go with OH. This is strong at base. This component, however, if I, when I put this in water, it's going to form this. This is a weak acid. So when I put this in water, what's going to happen? This is an acid. This is a base. What's going to happen? to my water it's going to gain so it's going to gain 
it's going to be H plus, or H, maybe it's easier for you to visualize it as H3O plus, and it's going to leave behind this. Don't start packing up on me. You'll be fine. I'll write you a pass if I have to. <clears throat> okay? So this has become an acid and this has become a base. Okay? So this is going to strip and end up forming some of this material. Okay? So we'll pick up there tomorrow. Uh, eight three for tomorrow. Eight three. You do eight three for tomorrow.